Hello and welcome to another installment of the Batfish demo series. Here we showcase key capabilities of Batfish and how you can include them as part of your network automation workflow. My name is Ratul and in this video I will show you how you can make provably safe changes to your access control list and firewall rules. Changing access control list and firewall rules is one of the riskiest updates to the network. Even a simple error can block access to critical services or open up sensitive resources to the outside world. And yet today, no tools exist to help you do that correctly and safely. In this video, I will show you a simple three-step process to make changes to your ACLs and firewall rules in a way that is provably safe and correct. I will demo this process on changing the ACL of an router. The full configuration of this router is available at the link shown in the description and a snippet is shown here. The change we want to make is to permit HTTP traffic on ports 80 and 8080 from a subnet 10.10.10.0/24 to another subnet 18.18.18/27. What we will do is implement this change in the configuration and use Batfish to validate that is absolutely correct. We start by initializing the snapshot before the change and describing the change more formally. This Python snippet is initializing the snapshot from this directory. Uh, where the configuration sit. Uh, this bit of code is describing what change we want to make, including the node name that we need to change, the name of the filter we want to change, and the change itself described using the source prefix, destination prefix, and HTTP using the protocols and destination ports here. As the first step in a change process, we want to ensure that the intended traffic is not already permitted. Because if it is already permitted, we don't need to make the change at all. We'll make this determination using the search filters question of Batfish. Given a potentially very large space of traffic, search filters returns any flow within that space that matches the specified action, which could be permit or deny. For our goal, this is a search filters query that we can use. What this query is doing is searching for any flows in this traffic, which is a change traffic on this filter on this node and the action is permit. So we are looking for any flow within the space that is permitted in the current snapshot that we have initialized for Batfish. So let's run this query. Since we did not get any flow, what we know now with certainty is that no flow in this space is permitted. If we were to get some flow, we may want to delete the ACL lines that permitted the flow. Luckily in our case, no flow is permitted, so we can proceed to step two. The second step in our process is to implement the change and to make sure that the intended traffic is permitted in the change we made. I have already implemented the change as it's shown by the diff here. This snippet now is loading that change from the path here and giving it a name candidate one. And this query here is asking us to find any flows in this space which are denied. So basically we are asking search filters to tell us if there's any flow in the change traffic space that will now be denied in the candidate one space. Uh, let's run this query. Since we got back no flows, we have the guarantee that no flow in the change traffic space is denied. That is all of them are actually permitted. So that's good. So our change is correctly permitting all the traffic we wanted to permit. The third and the final step of our change process is to ensure that no collateral damage has occurred. That is, no traffic outside of the intended space has been accidentally permitted or denied. When manually reviewing changes, engineers often stop at looking whether intended traffic has been correctly permitted or not. However, for correctness, we must also make sure that any traffic outside of the intended space has not been impacted. Checking this manually is very difficult because of the large space of traffic to consider. But Batfish makes it easy via the differential version of its search filters question. This snippet shows you how to do that. What it's doing is that it's searching for flows outside of the change traffic space by virtue of this invert search flag. And it's comparing the two snapshots, candidate one and the original one, and asking search filters question to return any flow outside of the space that is treated differently by these two snapshots. So let's run this query. If no collateral damage had occurred, this query will give us no results. However, as we see here, unfortunately, we do get a result. 
in particular this result is showing is that for this flow the base action which corresponds to the candidate snapshot is permit and the delta action which corresponds to the reference snapshot here is denied that is our candidate is permitting some traffic that the pre-change snapshot is denying and this traffic happens to be outside of the change we intended to make. If you look at this flow space carefully, we'll realize what happened. This flow space corresponds to destination 18, 18, 18, 32, which is actually broader than the destination space we wanted to permit. So as seen by the change request and the diff here, we can see that we wanted to permit slash 27, but we've accidentally permitted slash 26. And this destination sits in that space in there. So what has happened? So we've essentially allowed more flows than we wanted to allow. We should now go fix this, make another candidate change, and reanalyze it with Batfish. That is, we need to go back to step two. Assume now that we have implemented another candidate change to fix that error. And this change is shown by the diff here. As before, we will load this change into Batfish while this change is sitting at this path here and ask the same query that we asked in step two before. So let's run this query. As before, uh, no flow was returned. So what that means is that we've successfully allowed every single flow in the change traffic that we wanted to permit. It's time now again to move to step three. In step three, we check that no collateral damage has occurred. As before, we'll run the same query except this time we will compare the candidate to snapshot with the pre-change snapshot. So if you run this query, this is what happens. Since we got no flows, what this means is that no collateral damage has occurred and our change is perfectly correct. To summarize, in this video I showed you how you can make changes to your ACLs and firewall rules in a provably safe and correct manner. In particular, this is a three-step process. We first check that the intended traffic does not already match the desired action. Second, we check that the intended traffic is treated correctly by the candidate change that we make. And finally, we check that nothing but the intended traffic is impacted by the change. That is, there has not been any collateral damage. All right, thanks for watching. And don't forget to join our community on Slack or GitHub, where we'd love to help you get started with Batfish and answer any questions. So goodbye and take care.